Hey guys and welcome to today's video which is quite a serious health related video particularly for those who own female leopard geckos. Now of course I don't want to scare you, I don't want to put you off getting a female leopard gecko, you may never experience this at all but on the off chance that you may suspect your gecko of having this hopefully this video raises a bit of awareness and encourages you to seek help from a vet as I don't want anyone to overlook this thinking their gecko is just ovulating. Now, as you may know, I am currently writing an ebook all about leopard gecko care, and in that book, I will be covering some health topics. Health will also probably be the next guide over my retrieve care guides. Now, as I was researching this particular topic and writing it up, I did get this pit in my stomach. Now, I don't know this for sure, but there is a good chance that this may be why Ziggy passed away. It's purely speculation because over here getting a necropsy on uh, your pet really isn't that common or at least in my experience. However, I had a seemingly healthy gecko who was doing well, also I thought over the egg laying season, I don't actually think she laid any eggs. Um, and out of all my females, she looked nice and healthy and plump. So, before we go on to what this condition is, back in 2020, I actually had a viewer reach out to me and tell me about her female gecko. So she had a seven month old gecko that she thought was just egg bound, but it actually turned out she had this condition, follicular stasis. So we'll get into the more details about this condition in a moment, but basically her first gecko sadly passed away post-surgery. I don't know what the chances are of someone having this happen to them twice, but very unfortunately, her other older female gecko also developed this. However, thankfully, despite three months not eating, uh, losing 15 grams in weight and having six follicles removed, she did survive the surgery. I'll show you a photo of the follicles that Digmara sent me. Uh, warning, this could be quite graphic. It's not as bad as you may think. Um, but if you don't want to see that, skip to this timestamp. But yeah, as you can see, uh, this would certainly cause obstruction if left and would sadly cause the gecko to pass away. So what is follicular stasis? Why does it occur? What are the symptoms and how do we fix it? So it's actually quite a common reproductive disease that occurs pre-ovulation. So basically the follicles on the ovaries start to develop, but instead of properly developing and ovulating into the oviduct, they end up becoming static. So they don't move and they start to form a clump as you saw in that photo. Essentially, they're egg yolks that over time disintegrate or become infected, which of course will make your gecko very unwell. And if left untreated, the gecko will die. The only way to remove these is via surgery and usually when the vet does this they will remove the ovaries too so no more egg issues but I have heard of people having these removed but for whatever reason the vet doesn't remove the ovaries and the same issues occur in the future. And honestly if surgery wasn't so risky I think removing the ovaries uh, to begin with in like a healthy non-breeding gecko would eliminate so much stress on both the animal's body and the owner's mind. So what are the symptoms? Now in general, this condition does seem to be more common in bearded dragons, but of course it can affect all reptiles and the symptoms seem to be the same across the board. Annoyingly, the symptoms are very similar to the ones we see when female leopard geckos who haven't been bred with ovulate. So lack of appetite being a particularly common one. The only symptom I'd say stands out to me as being different is a gecko being lethargic. So usually when my females ovulate, they have so much energy, they're digging a lot, scratching at the doors of the vivarium, they just seem restless, they can't relax. Whereas lethargy is more like they have no energy, they're sluggish. Now, I can't remember Ziggy being like this. The only thing I'd say is the day before she passed away, I did find that she'd fallen asleep over her water dish, which I thought was odd, but I remember it being such a hot day that I thought maybe she was either cooling off or she fell asleep whilst drinking because I have seen leopard geckos almost like sleepwalk to their water bowl to drink. Um, but overall, you know, I just thought she was normal, um, just ovulating like she does every year. Uh, so as I said, sadly, the symptoms are very similar.
Now, I was talking to Jess from Jessica's Animal Friends because sadly she lost her African fat tail gecko to this and she said how her gecko was acting completely normal up to about five days before her death and sadly she died the day before her vet appointment. Now, I'll leave her link um, about this topic below but it goes to show sort of how quickly this can occur and how quickly things can go downhill. Sadly, reptiles are really good at hiding illnesses. Now the good thing is at the time of uploading this video we should all be out of the woods in terms of ovulation as leopard geckos in my experience tend to ovulate from like late February to mid early mid summer so we should all be okay but maybe I can help prepare you for next year. So how do we avoid this? Now sadly there doesn't seem to be a particular cause as to why this occurs. Could it be genes? diet, supplementation, I don't know. There, there doesn't seem to be a clear answer out there. From what I've read, it appears to affect middle-aged to older females who haven't been bred with. Um, and I think Digmara's gecko who suffered from this at only seven months old has to be quite rare, surely, because, you know, that's quite early for a gecko to be ovulating to begin with. Um, but she does tell me actually that this seems to be a common occurrence in Poland. So it'd be interesting to know what is one thing that maybe everyone is doing the same that might increase the risk of this? Or is it genetics? I'm really not sure. Um, but I just, I think we can assume it can happen at any age. Like, I don't want you to just think, oh, my gecko's young, it's fine. It only affects older geckos, you know what I mean? Um, I think the best thing we can do is be vigilant, keep a close eye on our geckos during egg laying season. If we notice a subtle change in behaviour, if we think something is up, see a vet. The most frustrating thing being a pet YouTuber is being contacted by owners who think there's something wrong with their gecko, uh, but won't take it to the vet because either they can't afford it or there isn't even a vet in their area. I don't want to be rude, but if there isn't a vet in the area or you can't afford one, don't get a pet. Leopard geckos generally are hardy, but that doesn't mean that things can't go wrong. And just a note, when you're at the vets, if they do an x-ray and they say, oh, there's nothing wrong, I can't see anything, that is because follicles don't always show up clearly on x-rays. So you may want to opt for an ultrasound, you'll get a better view of them there. And as I mentioned, the only real way to remove these is surgically and if you get the chance ask them to remove the ovaries as well so out of 10 how worried are you I'm so sorry I feel bad making this video but whether or not I made it it doesn't make the disease you know go away and I think a lot of people skip over health uh videos because they don't want to think of their gecko getting sick but honestly if you have watched this video and you've watched it all the way through thank you because it's so much better to be knowledgeable of a topic, to be prepared, that you can pick up on those early signs and hopefully save your animal rather than, you know, your animal being sick and you just frantically researching or reaching out to YouTubers asking what's up with the gecko. When in doubt, see a vet. Uh, but if you have researched this stuff beforehand, it really will hopefully help you. But yeah, if you want to see more content, and trust me, it's not as scary as this, please consider subscribing or supporting me over on Patreon. But thank you for watching, guys, and goodbye.